Hey, your tens. Now, this is actually how I'd intended to take this up, so bear with me. I'm just testing it out right now, but I've been spending the holidays trying to figure out how to do this, so I figured I'd go through it anyways. So assessment number one, knowing your formulas. Most of these formulas you guys actually did pretty well with, but there were a few that we need to go through because a lot of people made mistakes on the same ones. The first one being the area of a sector, and that's going to be a fraction of the area of the whole circle. So that's this one down here where the area of the circle is pi r squared. The fraction of the circle is, depends on the angle at the center. So that's the angle divided by 360 times pi r squared. The next one was the surface area of a cylinder, which includes the two circular areas on either end and the rectangular shape that wraps around the cylinder. So that's this one over here. You can see it ends with two pi r squares. So that's two circle areas. And it's got the two pi r, which is the circumference of a circle, multiplied by h, which is the length of the cylinder, because that's the rectangle that's wrapped around the circumference at either end and has the length that's equal to the height of the uh, cylinder. So basically length times width. The next one was the volume of cuboid, and I'm not sure why this was such a big mistake on the exam, but there was a lot of people with this mistake, sorry, on the assessment. Uh, length times width times height. It's the area of a rectangle multiplied by the distance between those two congruent rectangles in the shape, same as with any other prism, the area of the cross section multiplied by the distance between the cross sections. And the last one was the curved surface area of a hemisphere, a hemisphere being half of a sphere. And when we talk about the curved surface area, that's not the whole thing. That's not all of the faces. It's just the, the curved bit. So that doesn't include the circular face that you might see when you slice through a, a, a sphere. So it's really just half of the sphere. Now, the surface area of the sphere, I've got circled here in red, is 4 pi r squared. So half of that would just be 2 pi r squared. That's this one up here. Okay. Now, these formulas were sort of given to you as the first question to get you thinking about it, to remind you of the formulas that you need to know to use for all of the other questions, which is partly why I really wanted you to write a lot of this down. But I know there wasn't very much time for it. In future, you will have more time, but you need to write things down or you will be making mistakes. You'll get yourself confused. You'll be doing the same work over two or three times in the same assessment. So please be neat. Write the question number. Copy it down. Right, first, second question. Uh, we've got a circle here with a circular hole in the middle of it. So we're going to find the area of the big circle and we're going to minus the area of the small circle from the center of it. Now, the measurements that we got here for the big circle is the radius would be from the center all the way out to the outside. It's not just the two, it's not just the three, it's the three plus the two. So the radius of the big circle is five. And the radius for the small circle is a bit in the middle, is three. So you're going to do the big circle pi times 5 squared minus the area of the small circle pi times 3 squared. Now working that through, 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9, so that's 25 pi minus 9 pi. And I didn't work through the pi because I want to get an exact answer. But treating pi like it's x, like it's some variable, if I've got 25 of them and I'm taking away 9 of them, 25 minus 9, that's 16 pi, right? I've bit, written this bit in blue, and it's happened a few times in this um, slideshow as well just to show the working that I'm mentally doing, but I might not have to actually write it down. So that's going to be 16 pi. I could probably jump directly from 25 pi minus 9 pi directly to 16 pi. Okay. Next question, I've titled it the volume of a sphere, but it's actually a hemisphere, which is half of the volume of a sphere. Now, things to watch out for on this hemisphere, I didn't tell you what the radius is. I told you what the diameter is. So don't do... 18.6 um, as your radius, we're going to half that. Right, so finding the volume of this hemisphere, we're doing the volume of half of a sphere, so half of this volume of a sphere formula, half of 4 over 3 pi r cubed. You could multiply the fractions together, so that's top times top, bottom times bottom, that would make 6 over, or sorry, 4 over 6 pi r cubed, or that could simplify to be 2 over 3. And I honestly think I would probably go with this directly. Half of four thirds is two thirds. So we've got the formula for the volume of a hemisphere and we're just substituting into it. Not 18.6, but half of that 9.3. So two over three. And I've just put the radius in front of the pi because generally with algebra, I put the numbers before the letters. So I've got 9.3 cubed here. And we're working this out to three significant figures. So I could put this all directly in my calculator, including the pi, 
and it gives me 1,684.6. Now, to three significant figures, that's going to be 1680. So that's 1,680 to three significant figures. Next up, we've got the volume of a cylinder and a hemisphere. So I've got a cylinder with a hemisphere, half of a sphere, attached right to the end of it. And to find the surface area of this shape, you need to find the sum of the areas of all of the outer faces. So that's going to be half of the area, surface area of a sphere, which is just this curved surface area here, plus just the curved bit of the surface area of the cylinder. So that's going to be the circumference around the circle multiplied by the height of the cylinder, plus we've got the area of the circle here. Okay, so we got the hemisphere, the curved surface face of the cylinder, and the circular face. That's going to be half of a sphere. Remember that the surface area of the sphere was 4 pi r squared, so half of that is 2 pi r squared. The surface uh, face of the cylinder, curved face of the cylinder is pi r, uh, 2 pi r times h, the circumference around the circle, multiplied by the length of the cylinder plus pi r squared, which is the area of just that circle there. Okay, simplifying that before I go substituting into this, because I want to get my answer in terms of pi, so I want to keep it as simple as possible. I see that I've got 2 pi r squared, and I've got another pi r squared together. Together that makes 3 pi r squared. Okay, and here I can start substituting in my r's, and r is the same in all cases here. The radius of this circle is the same as the radius of this sphere, because as you see, they're attached to each other. The radius in this direction for the sphere will be the same as the radius in that direction for the sphere. And it says down here, the hemisphere has a radius of 3.4 as well. So substituting that in, I've got 3 pi 3.4 squared plus 2 pi 3.4 times the height, 8.3. Again, I want to simplify as much as possible. So I can go ahead and work out the um, number calculations, but I'm not going to include pi in that calculation. I'm trying to solve exactly. So 3.4 squared is exactly 11.56. I didn't round there. And I did 3.4 times 8.3 multiply by the 2 as well. So all the numbers multiply together, and I just, the pi on the end is exactly 56.44. And again, I've got some number of pi here and some number of pi here. I can group them together. They are like terms. But first, let me finish simplifying. That is 34.68 pi plus 56.44 pi, which together would make 91.12 pi exactly no rounding at all okay so that's this option down here if you had gone a step further and tried to work out what that was if you multiplied it by pi you would see that that 91.12 pi is 286 approximately rounded but i did this on purpose because i didn't want you to accidentally choose this option here that has centimeters cubed which would be a volume and here we're working out a surface area a two-dimensional measure wouldn't have centimeters cubed as its units of measure. So that was a sort of a hint to keep away from that one. So our answer uh, exactly in terms of pi is this one, 91.12 pi centimeters squared. All right, next one. Here we've got similar spheres. Now you never need to be told that spheres are similar because they always will be. The measurements of a sphere the ones that you will ever always refer to is the radius. There is no other measurement. It's not like length times width times height where the radius might be the same or um, they might be similar, but another measurement would be different. Spheres are always similar because whatever the radius of one is and the radius of the other is, you could always say that the radius of one has been multiplied by some scale factor to make the radius of the other. There is no other measurement to compare there. Okay, so we're talking about spheres here. We're talking about planets. And you're given the radius of two planets. And you're told that the volume of Jupiter is some k, some number, multiplied by the volume of Earth. So we're saying that the volume of Jupiter is the same as the volume of Earth multiplied by some scale factor. But be careful here, because when we're talking about volumes, it's not just the scale factor, the same scale factor that uh, joins the radiuses. It's a scale factor cubed. So when we're talking about Jupiter's radius and Earth's radius, you can see that Jupiter's radius is bigger than Earth's radius. So the scale factor, if I do Jupiter is equal to Earth's, uh, Earth's radius multiplied by some scale factor, it's going to be a number that's bigger than 1, right? It's going to give you a bigger answer. It's going to be bigger than 1. So I've got Jupiter is equal to some scale factor multiplied by Earth 
radius. Right, just for simplicity here, I've changed the words into SF for scale factor. So Jupiter's radius is equal to Earth's radius multiplied by the scale factor. And rearranging that to find the scale factor, just sending Earth's radius to the other side, I've got the scale factor is equal to Jupiter's radius over Earth's radius, which is approximately, not exactly, but approximately 10.1. So the scale factor for the length of the radius of these are similar. Uh, sorry, the scale factor for the length of the radius of these similar shapes is 10.1. Now, not to be mistaken with 1.10. I did that on purpose. I didn't want to give you a wrong answer that I thought you might actually choose, but it is similar. You do have to keep having a look at this. Did I make do something wrong here? Have I finished yet? I haven't finished yet. Keep going. We're talking about the scale factor between the radiuses here. Now we want to find out what k is, which is the scale factor cubed, which links the volume of the Jupiter to the volume of Earth. Now, it's not that one, not the red one. If this is the scale factor for the radiuses, the surface area, an area, a two-dimensional measure of Jupiter would be equal to scale factor squared times the surface area of Earth. So the surface area of Jupiter would be equal to 10.1. Well, that's an approximation, so I would use the exact value here from the fraction here. But that value squared times the surface area of the Earth. And the volume of Jupiter, because it's a three-dimensional measure of volume, I would do the scale factor cubed times the volume of Earth. So again, using this exact fraction here, that value cubed tells me what I need to multiply the volume of Earth by to get Jupiter's volume. And that works out to be approximately 1,321. Again, I'm using this exact value up here from the top, not rounding. So I'm not actually doing 10.1 cubed. I'm actually doing the, the Jupiter radius divided by the Earth radius, that number cubed. Okay, so that works out to be 13.21 or 1,321. Again, you could have mistakenly made that one there, and maybe that was a bit mean of me to give you that one. But the three significant figures, that would be this one down here. 1,320 to three significant figures. Okay, Pythagoras and radius of a circle. I'll bet it would have been helpful if I had actually made this the title of the question, eh? Pythagoras and radius of a circle. So you need to use Pythagoras in order to work this out. You're given one length here, <coughs> excuse me, which is not the radius or the diameter, it's a chord. But if I do this and I draw the diameter from D across to B, then you would see that I've got a right angle triangle here from D to A and A to B. There's a right angle here because we're told, of course, that A, B, C, D are the points around a circle that make a square. So that's a right angle there, 90 degrees in a square. And this would be 7 and this would be 7. So if I want to work out what the diameter is, I can say that's a right angle triangle. I'm going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared being the diameter, so that's the length from D to B that I drew there in red. And I'll go ahead and work that through. That's going to be 7 squared plus 7 squared gives me my diameter squared. 7 squared is 49, so that's 49 plus 49 equals diameter squared. So my diameter squared is 98. So diameter must be the square root of 98. I want to keep things exact, at least until the very end here. So I'm going to use the square root of 98 elsewhere in my calculations. So diameter is approximately this, but again, I want to keep this exact for other calculations that I'm going to do. The radius is half of the diameter. I'm going to write radius as square root of 98 divided by 2. Okay, so to three significant figures, that would be 4.94 with a 9 after it is 4.95. But again, I need to write this down because this question in particular is only part one of a multi-part question. So I'm going to keep thinking that radius is a square root of 98 over 2. Much better to work with exact, with exact values, even though that's my answer for the first part. Okay, so going on to the next part. Remember my exact answer from the previous question? Working out the area of the circle? Well, I know the area of a circle if I know what the radius is. So that's going to be pi r squared. Now with exact values, if I'm going to square a fraction, I need to square both the top and the bottom. And the square root of 98 squared you're square rooting something and then you're squaring it. You're undoing what you've just done. It's just going to be 98. And then on the bottom, we've got 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so we've got 98 over 4 pi, which could be simplified down to 24.5 pi exactly. Or you could leave that as a fraction as well. That would be 
46, sorry, 49 over 2 pi. Right, finally, the area of the composite shape involving circles. So we've got a circle, and then I've got a square cut out of the middle of it. We've worked through bit by bit, and that was on purpose there to make sure that you've got the right steps in between. But you're doing the area of the circle minus the area of the square, and we had just worked out the area of the circle, so this should be easy. Area of the circle is 24.5 pi, and the area of the square, length times width, is 7 times 7, which is 49. So I've got 24.5 pi minus 49, and working that out the three significant figures, I'm actually going to calculate that, is approximately 27.969, so three significant figures, that would be 27.9 The is going to round up, which means that the 7 has to round up, but in the place of the 9, I need to put a 0, because I need to show that I've got three significant figures. So that's going to be 28.0. Three significant figures. I've got to show one, two, three digits there. Even though that's a zero, it's there because it was a nine that rounded up. Right, surface area and volume of a hemisphere. So this is a tricky question, and especially since on the exam, this didn't show up properly. So you weren't deducted anything from this, but I would like to go through it because it is a good challenging question for you. You're told the total surface area is, you weren't told, I'm telling you now, is 16 over 3 pi. And the hemisphere, uh, the volume of the hemisphere is k pi. So we're trying to work out what the volume is exactly and work out what k is. So some number of pi and work out what that number is. Okay, so we've got the total surface area. We're going to use that to work out what the radius is because if we know what the radius is, we can work out what the volume is. So setting up an equation for this, we know that the surface area for this hemisphere is 16 over 3 pi, and we know the surface area for a hemisphere is going to be half of the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared, so half of that 2 pi r squared, plus we've got the circular face this time, which is pi r squared. Okay, so the total surface area of the sphere is 16 over 3 pi, that's half the sphere plus the circular face, that's half of 4 pi r squared plus pi r squared. And we know that the answer is 16 over 3 pi. Simplifying this, half of 4 pi r squared is 2 pi r squared. We've got 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared. That simplifies really nicely to make 3 pi r squared, right? So 3 pi r squared is 16 pi over 3. And notice that I've gone from 16 over 3 pi to 16 pi over 3. It's the same thing. When you multiply a fraction by a value, you just multiply the top. So I've got 16 pi on the top, 3 on the bottom here, and that's just going to make it easier for me to rearrange this. I want to find out what r is by itself, so I want to get rid of the 3 pi from this side. This side is multiplying, so on that side it's going to be dividing. In blue here, I'm showing you what I'm hoping you will be doing mentally. You should know that when you've got a fraction, you're dividing by something, you're just going to multiply the bottom of the fraction. Right, because divided by 3 pi is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, flipping it upside down, 1 over 3 pi. Again, this is in blue because I don't think we really need to write this down, or we should be getting to the point where we don't need to write this down. That's all just going to end up being r squared is equal to 16 pi over 9 pi. And if you can skip those steps in between, much quicker. So I'm just multiplying this to the bottom. Okay, That can clearly be simplified. So I can divide both the top and the bottom by pi, which is going to leave me with 16 over 9. And if that's r squared, I need to square root that. Square root of a fraction, just like squaring a fraction, I need to square root both the top and the bottom. And the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 9 is 3, so r is equal to 4 over 3. A long question, we're not done yet. We've worked out what the radius is so that we can work out what the volume is in terms of pi pi, so exact volume, and work out what the number of pi that is, so work out what k is. So the volume of a hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere. And now, knowing the formula for the volume of a sphere, 4 over 3 pi r cubed, half of that, again, I'm putting this in blue here because I'm hoping we can simplify this mentally, but half times 4 over 3 is going to be 4 over 6 times the top and bottom there. Or we could have just said half of 4 thirds would be 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times pi r cubed, and r being 4 over 3. Again, a fraction cubed, I need to cube both the top and the bottom, and that's going to be 
150, sorry, 1.5802 pi to three significant figures for k though, that's gonna be 1.58 pi. So k to three significant figures is 1.58. That's this one over here. Now, uh, sector area, arc length, and perimeter of a sector. Another pretty long one. Um, we're told the angle is 50 degrees, and we're told that the sector has an area of 20 pi. Now, this is a really important skill that we need to be able to handle at year 11. We've been learning it since year 9, and it's, it's a hard one. But you're given the sector area, so you need to use that sector area to find the information you need to figure out the perimeter. So basically, we need to know what the radius is. So let's set up an equation here that's equal to 12, 20 pi for the sector area. So sector area is a fraction of the circle. So that's going to be 50 degrees out of 360 degrees times pi r squared. And we're told that that's equal to 20 pi. We want to simplify that and get r on its own. So Again, I'm working in blue here. I'm hoping you could simplify that fraction mentally or maybe just cross your zeros because you divided both top and bottom by 10. I've also put my pi up here at the top because I'm planning on leaving the r by itself on this side and moving everything else to the other side. So getting the r squared on its own, I've taken that fraction which was multiplying over there and I've divided. But again, we know how to divide by a fraction. I'm hoping that you see it here. You're multiplying by 5 pi and you're dividing by 36. Take it to the other side, divide by 5 pi and times by 36. So flipping the fraction, multiplying by the reciprocal. And again, still in blue because I'm hoping you can see that this is going to simplify really nicely. If I have 20 pi on the top and I've got 5 pi on the bottom, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 5 pi. That's going to leave me with 4 on the top times 36 and 1 on the bottom. But again, that's in blue because I'm hoping we don't need to write that 1 on the bottom. If you've got 1 on the bottom here, you've got a fraction divided by 1. Anything divided by 1 is no longer a fraction. The numerator is just a whole number. Okay, So this ends up being r squared is equal to 4 times 36. That's 144, which is lucky because that's a square number. It square roots really nicely. r becomes 12. Again, this is not our final answer. This is just the value for the radius that we need in order to work out what the perimeter of this sector is. The perimeter of the exact sector includes two radiuses. So a radius plus a radius plus the arc length. Okay, so I'm going to do the perimeter is the length of the arc plus two radii, plural for radius. Right? The arc length is a fraction of the circumference of the circle. That's 50, the angle, over 360 times 2 pi r plus the two radiuses, because we're talking about the distance around the whole shape. That's the arc plus the radius plus another radius. Okay, we can substitute in our value for r, and it's a nice exact whole number, 12. Okay, and I've just moved here. Instead of 2 pi r, I've put the 12 in front of the pi, because in algebra, I like the numbers before the letters. That can be simplified, and that works out to be 120 over 36 pi, plus 24. This obviously simplifies as well. That makes 10 over 3 pi. And that's 24 as a whole number and 10 pi over 3. Now, this is the same thing as this down here. I'm just looking at my options for my answer. And the reason I gave you options for the answer is because I knew there were several different ways that you could substitute this in. You could write this in 10 over 3 pi plus 40, 24 or 24 plus 10 over 3 pi or 24 plus 10 pi over 3. Many ways that you could write it, they are all equivalent. And then you don't have to worry about writing a fraction into um, Schoology, which is a bit tricky. So it's the second one down here.